Hey YouTube, Alfred Andrew Payne here again. Today we're going to talk about my Ruger PC carbine and the upgrades I did to make it competition ready for me. Uh, great time to do another video. We're stuck inside again because of the coronavirus. You can't go out and shoot anywhere. All of the uh, clubs have been closed, the matches have been canceled, so it's a good time for another video. So let's get right into it. I bought this Ruger PC carbine in around December of 2018. This is the original version. Doesn't have the, uh, the upgraded handguard or the pistol grip. Um, so a quick overview of that. I have held both of those and I think they make them a little bit too heavy. This is definitely the lightest uh, option that you have out there is the original version. So what I'll do is I'll talk a little bit, uh, an overview of the gun, uh, why I did certain things, and then uh, we'll do some close-ups of the individual components and why I chose them. So like I said, the original version, I added one spacer in the butt to make it uh, fit me better. I got a Bushnell TRS-25 red dot on there that works awesome for me. I added a second uh, bolt handle, charging handle, so I can work them ambidextrously. One is longer on one side than the other, and there's a reason for that. We'll talk about that in a minute. I've got a, uh, a TACCOM Magwell, which works great. Uh, by the way, it's empty and flag. Uh, I've got a Crimson Trace Railmaster Green Laser on the front end. I've got a, um, a Gunfighter Muzzle Brake, and at one time it was made by CMB. It says in the bottom, Custom Muzzle Brake. Um, I find it difficult to find on the internet now, uh, but they're available. You just gotta um, search for them. It's called the Gunfighter. And I also put on a, uh, an aluminum trigger. It's nothing fancy. It's an eBay item. It's a trigger that fits the, um, the Ruger BX trigger for the 1022, same trigger. We'll talk about that a little bit. And, uh, and last but not least, and I think the most important thing here is the mag release button. That is a, I made that myself based on a design by um, TACCOM. Um, you can buy one from them, the exact same shape, and uh, we'll talk about that in a bit too. So I'm going to switch the view here to, so, to a close-up view, and then uh, we'll discuss each item individually. Okay, so we're back. I'm going to do some close-ups of the individual components. I'm going to start out with the red dot. This is a Bushnell TRS-25. It's pretty popular. I chose this because uh, it was pretty compact. It was a good price range. Uh, you can get them on uh, Amazon from anywhere from $42 to $75. You gotta keep an eye out for the price changes. They change pretty quick. So I chose this again because it was small, it's lightweight, and I didn't see the need for a $400 um, EOTech or anything like that on a, a competition gun. I'm not gonna see combat with this gun. This is, is perfectly fine for me. I did have a problem with the first one I bought. The front lens actually came out, popped out. Uh, I sent it back, they sent me another one. I actually had two of these to start with. When I got this one back, it was a big difference between the two that I had and the one they replaced it with. The new one, which I like a whole lot better, has got a larger um, bore through the eyepiece. The actually opening on the inside is about an eighth of an inch wider uh, in diameter more than the original one, which gives you more field of view. You don't get that tunnel vision effect when you're looking through it. So I like that better. And it's way brighter. Uh, the original two that I had, I uh, usually had to set it on 11, the highest that it goes to get a good uh, red dot outdoors. This one, um, on the setting of about six is equivalent to the old one at 11. It's much brighter. If you look through the inside, um, you can see there's differences in, in construction on the inside. Uh, my only fear is that if I buy another one, I don't know which one I'm going to get. Uh, I talked to the gentleman on the phone when I returned the first one, and uh, he said that they're changing constantly. They get them from different suppliers, um, so you don't know what you're going to get. I, you know, I can tell them I want the one with the bigger inside diameter. You're never going to know. Take a chance. Uh, with Amazon, you can at least always send it back. Okay, other than that, the site works great. It, it never loses zero. I, I like it. Uh, next on the list is the Magwell. This is a TACCOM Magwell. I think they're $50. Well worth it. It gives you a nice, uh, nice feed. Let's see if I got, a, I got a magazine here. I mean, you can just throw it in from anywhere. It just wiggles its way in. It, it works really well. 
Uh, we're going to have a demonstration of uh, reloading in a few minutes, and you'll be able to see what, a, what an advantage it has. By the way, my magazines are loaded with dummy rounds. Okay, they're red tips, and there are no primers in the pockets. I made these myself, and these are my, my dummy rounds. So this is what you'll see, and the flag will be in the whole time anyways. So that's that. Okay, mag release. The mag release I made myself. This is uh, made out of Delrin, black Delrin. And you can buy these for $26 from TACCOM. Uh, for that kind of money, I have a lathe. I made my own. It's the exact same shape and uh, probably the same size. And uh, we'll talk about why that's so effective um, the way it is. Uh, the trigger. I bought this trigger on eBay. It is a trigger that was designed for the Ruger BX trigger. It's the same trigger. It's probably a lot of the same components within the trigger housing. Uh, I bought it because it's aluminum. I didn't like the idea of plastic. Uh, I was going to drill and tap it for my over-travel screw, but instead I decided to put it in the frame of the gun instead of in the trigger. Um, so again, nothing fancy there. The only thing I did to the trigger is I took it apart and I smoothed all of the internal components. And for the uh, trigger return spring and the sear spring, I clipped one coil off. I now have a... Um, a trigger pull of three pounds, right on the money, really crisp, very short reset. By the way, you get a short reset, um, not because you did anything internally, because it appears to be less of an overset because of the over travel screw. Since after the trigger breaks, it really only moves a few thousandths of an inch, the reset is shorter. If you think about it, if that trigger moved an eighth of an inch after it breaks, that's another eighth of an inch it has to move forward plus the reset. So. Um, it's perceived that you get less reset, uh, and it's all because of the over-travel screw that's put in there. Uh, this has a full pound uh, hammer spring as well. I did not change the hammer spring. I wanted good, consistent ignition. Bolt handle. The one on this side is the stock bolt handle, and the one on the bottom side is an eBay. I don't know who I got it from. There's a bunch of them out there. Uh, and it's longer. Uh, the reason why it I like the longer one on that side is because that's the side I'll recharge with. I'm right-handed if I have an issue. And if you check out my videos, I did have some issues with uh, extraction problems. And I had to use that handle quite a bit, unfortunately. But uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. The other thing you got to be careful of, if you buy a uh, magazine release button and your um, bolt handle is too short, when you lay the gun down on its side, there's a lot of stages where you have to start with the gun down your button will hit and it'll pop your magazine out. So make sure that you try that at home, that when you lay it down on the bench, it's not gonna pop the magazine out on that side. You'll have to lay it on the other side. Uh, let's see, let's go into the muzzle brake. The muzzle brake is, I'm gonna turn over my notes here so I get it all right, it is called a gunfighter. And it came from a company called Custom Muzzle Brake in their logo stamped on the bottom, CMB. Very difficult to find this now. I did find it in one spot on uh, when I did a video, when I did a search for it. The reason why I chose this one is I wanted one that deflected gases upwards as well as back to keep the muzzle down. So this serves a, uh, two functions. It keeps the muzzle down from directing gases up and it keeps the gun from recoiling back into your shoulder by deflecting the gases out those side ports. So it's dual function. And I did test this, not scientifically, but I shot uh, standing, leaning against the support at the gun club, and at 20 yards, without the muzzle brake, uh, watching how high my dot rose, I had a, a sheet of paper down there with markings on it. At 20 yards, the muzzle rose 10 inches at point of impact, so 10 inches at 20 yards. With the muzzle brake on there, I have no perceivable movement at all. If you look at it in the camera, without the muzzle brake, the muzzle seems to move an eighth of an inch, but that's at the muzzle. You extend that out 20 yards and that's quite a bit. So follow-up shots are dead on. Um, I don't have to worry about bringing the rifle down again for taking the second shot. Uh, it's always gonna be right there for multiple shots. So it works really good for me. Um, spring kits. M Carbo makes a spring kit. I'm gonna go back to the trigger for a minute. I forgot to mention this. I didn't buy one from them. The, the price was right. 
I did not buy one from them because um, there was mixed reviews. Some people put them in and said it didn't change the spring weight, uh, the trigger pull weight at all. Others said it did. Uh, so I took my chances and I did my own trigger work. I do all my triggers on all of my guns anyway. So um, I did not buy their, their uh, spring kits. So while we're on that subject of M Carbo, um, they do make great products. This gun had a lot of malfunctions with the extractor. Uh, you'll go on the internet and you can find that after three, four, five hundred 500 rounds, you start getting failures to eject. This gun started doing it at a match. Uh, so the option was to get a new extractor and change it every three or 400 rounds, which I didn't want to do. So I reworked my own. And if you look at the stock extractor, you'll see that it's very, very minimal grab uh, on the cartridge head. It can slip off and it does. And all the cartridge heads are not the same. I compared a lot of brands, Remington, Winchester, Federal, and the, the cartridge head is a little bit different in shape from all of them. So I reworked it so that uh, it was cut a lot deeper. Um, anyways, it's working for me now. The gun does not malfunction anymore. You can get one from M Carbo. I think they're about uh, 29 bucks a piece plus shipping and tax. Runs you about $40 when you're done. But uh, any review I've ever read, people love them. It's made out of hardened tool steel. It's not gonna wear out. I'm sure mine's gonna wear out when that happens. I will buy one from M Carbo. So just give me one second here to uh, take the laser off. We're gonna talk about that. Okay, so this is an, uh, a Crimson Trace Railmaster laser. They're pretty popular. They run about 120 bucks. I got this one on a deal where you bought one and you got a second red one free. And uh, that's on my AR. So what I did was, the reason why I made this setup is, uh, let's see if I can get in a position to show you this. When I grab the fore end of my rifle, I like to have a long grip. You can't really get one here. So I, I wrap my finger around the front and it gives me an equivalent of a grip of about out to here. I hope you can all see that. If I had a laser in here, if I mounted it right to the rail, you can see I'm hiding the laser. So what I did was I bought a rail that was uh, a half inch offset. You can buy them at different offsets and it come out to about here, it was long. I cut it to where I needed it, but then I took a second rail, I don't know if you can see a little, little hole in here, and I screwed one to the other. You can see the bottom of the screw head sticking through here. So I screwed one to the other, and I mounted the laser on top. So now this sits on the rifle, up into here. The nice thing about this one is there's only three quarters of an inch offset from the center line of the bore of the rifle to the laser. So it basically shoots pretty flat right out to 20, 30, 40 yards, depending on how you set it. I don't have to worry that there's a three inch offset. Uh, so if I'm shooting up close and it's a head target, you know, do I have to worry about offsetting, uh, aim at the top of the, the, the target to hit in the A zone on the, on the head target? I don't have to worry about that anymore. The only problem is you have to remember is that your adjustments are upside down. So um, going up, you have to turn down, going left to right, it's right to left, it's backwards. The other thing is, is the battery compartment. I have to take this off the gun to um, change a battery. However, I did notice that taking it off and back on again, I have not lost zero. It's right there and if it, if it does change, um, I just get in there in my basement, I have uh, almost 20 yards and I just adjust it so it co-witnesses with my red dot. Uh, and that's, uh, that's about it as far as that goes. So I think we covered everything close up. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna do a uh, little reloading demonstration, uh, again with uh, magazines with dummy rounds. And uh, you'll, see the, you'll see how I, my grip works with this laser and you'll see how effective the, uh, the button is at releasing the magazines and the, um, the magwell for inserting magazines. So uh, let's get right into that. 
Okay, here we are. We're gonna give this a try now. I have my timer set with a par time of 0.4 seconds. See how fast we can get from our last shot to uh, ejecting that magazine. And notice the motion. Um, when I come from my firing position, my hand is just gonna swipe the button on the way down, take out the next mag. I don't have to kind of fumble around and try to find it with my thumb. It's just a fast slap on the way down. Let's give it a try. There it is. We'll try it again. Second one. Try it again. And there you have it. No fumbling with your thumb. You just slap it on the way down. Okay, we're back. I reset my timer for a par time of 1.7 seconds, which is just about where I am right now, trying to get to 1.5. Uh, let's see if we can do a, uh, a reload in 1.7 seconds. Here we go. That one seemed pretty good. Let's see if I can do three in a row here. Here we go. Too bad. Try it one more time. There we go. Not too bad. It's about 1.7 seconds for each one with a little bit of practice. It'll probably get a little bit faster. Okay, I hope that little demonstration was informative and uh, to show you just what you can do with this rifle. Um, also, one thing I didn't mention is I put grip tape in various spots on the rifle here. Uh, your hands get sweaty when you're running between stages uh, with one hand. You want to be able to get a good grip without dropping that rifle. That would be bad. The other thing I want to mention too is the reason why I bought this rifle is I do have an AR. Uh, in Massachusetts you cannot buy ARs anymore. Uh, you can make one from parts. Uh, that's the reason why I bought this in the first place. So uh, having gone to some matches with it, I think I've shot in uh, five matches with this rifle now. So I tried to see how I compare with the AR shooters who are spending $1,500 to $2,000 for their rifles. And I do pretty good. Um, in a couple of matches, I finished um, second out of seven, first out of five, second out of 12, and third out of 13 is one I can't remember. So I do pretty well against the guys with the more expensive guns. Uh, I haven't added up how much I have into this rifle. But as I'm looking here, I've got, you know, uh, 50, 50, we'll call it 50. Uh, the trigger was 20 bucks, the bolt release 20 bucks, and uh, the laser is 120 plus a few parts. So if you want to add that all up, uh, that's what I'm into for the whole rifle, plus 450 for the rifle. Uh, using this rifle, my first year, uh, at the end of last year, I got my A rating in USPSA which I thought was pretty good. Uh, the reason why I didn't finish higher in a lot of these matches is because of the extractor problem. Plus, uh, I'm getting on in years, I'm 65 years old, I can't run as fast as the 25 year olds between stages. So there's an advantage there for the long stages where these guys are uh, just outrunning me too. Um, but again, I hope it was informative. If you have any questions, post them and I'll answer. Uh, keep an eye out for other videos I have coming out. And uh, everybody stay safe and uh, get shooting out there when we can get our gun clubs back and our matches back. And we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thanks for watching.